I know that the attention span of the average human being is very short. So people, when they click on a, on a video on YouTube, they have the tendency to, to drop very quickly. So I will try to give you a presentation of the content of the video in the first uh, couple of dozens of seconds of the video. In this video, I will try to answer the question, what is Hegelian logic? What is speculative logic? And simply, what is logic? And it will be a fully culturally Hegelian video. Namely, I will use references from modern pop culture, uh, songs by Daft Punk, Cascada, and Kylie Minogue, um, teachings from Evola by commenting the chapter four of <clears throat> the doctrine of awakening, uh, titled uh, Destruction of the Demon of Dialectics. Uh, I may talk a little bit about the Bible and uh, finally, I will talk about speculative logic and I will incorporate, uh, if I succeed in the video, a plan, a broad view of the main categories of Hegel's logic in German and in English to help the English viewers uh, become familiar with the German vocabulary. And also, I will briefly illustrate uh, the application, the illustration, the, 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 the concrete aspect of speculative logic by examples drawn from the modern life of the West or from the sciences. Uh, yeah. So if you want to have a full experience of cultural Hegelianism as a process of uh, spirit becoming conscious of itself or the divine totality of which we are all parts becoming conscious of itself i recommend that you do not pay too much attention to this empirical being but try to focus on the meaning of my words listen to my words do not pay too much attention to my empirical self and also listen to the songs that i put in the description either during the video or after the video and try to let the music speak to your soul and to try to connect the meaning of the lyrics and the mood of the songs by the content of the video and the, the words that I speak. And you can watch the video several times if necessary, if you think that there is truth and meaning and um, intelligibility to be found. Uh, I will begin by <coughs> quoting um, a passage from Hegel's logic in the in the very beginning, the preface, I think, he says that speculative logic is the exposition of God as he is in his eternal essence before the creation of nature and of a finite spirit. But Hegel modified his logic several times, so God is susceptible of being modified. I don't know. Um, I will adopt two perspectives. The first is what I call a cosmological evolutionary perspective, which is the perspective of ordinary scientific consciousness, the idea that the cosmos is the result of some 13 billion years of evolution. And um, in this view, we know since Galileo, and there were already hints by Pythagoras and Plato, but it's with the modern scientific revolution of the early 17th century that we know that nature, the spatio-temporal world, is a book written in mathematical language. And the modern uh, work of um, logicians and mathematicians like Russell and Whitehead and, and others has been an attempt to ground mathematics on logic, to unify logic and mathematics. So one could say that in a materialist, empirical, uh, scientific, in the classical sense of the word, uh, nature, the physical world, is, is written in, in mathematical and logical uh, um, uh, language. So, yeah. And in the speculative, which is mystical view of things, uh, which is an idealist perspective, 
which is Hegel's perspective, so to speak, uh, nature is the reflection, the mirror of uh, the mind of God. So whether one adopts uh, an evolutionary perspective, a realist empirical perspective, or an idealist speculative perspective, in both instances, uh, nature is written in logical and mathematical terms. So, yeah, about logic, I simplify, but broadly, in the Western tradition, there are three kinds of logic. There is the classical logic, which is founded upon Aristotelian logic with uh, variations, but since the time of Aristotle up until Hegel, uh, there has been, up until Kant, one could say, there's been a, a classical uh, legacy of logic. Then there was Hegelian logic, which was a reshaping, uh, uh, an attempt to um, find the, the logical aspect within mystical experiences. So it's a, a, a mystical logic. This is the meaning of the word speculative. And in the 19th century, there's been an attempt to refound classical logic on new grounds by um, Frege at first, and then Russell, Whitehead, Carnap, and the logical positivists of the, the Vienna Circle, I think. And this is the, the birth of, of um, modern symbolic logic. But if speculative logic is the truth, it must contain within itself all forms of logic, and, and it must be the foundation of mathematics. So if Hegel's logic, which is according to Hegel, the mind of God, it must contain within itself the foundation and the truth of both classical and symbolic logic and also of mathematics. So, yeah. So now the question, what is Hegel's logic? How could we define? When we say, when we ask the question, what, we demand that determinations be given. We demand to qualify the object or the being that we are seeking to, to define. What is something means to determine, to qualify, to, to predicate, to attribute. Uh, one could define Hegel's logic, which is speculative logic, as a self-created or self-creative process of being and thought interacting with one another. And According to this logical view, the structure of the mind, the categories with which we think about the world, and the structure of being, the categories, the ontological categories of, of being, of the world, are identical, but they are in a, in a reciprocal uh, dialogue, one could say, a dialectical interplay with one another. And um, that is the reason why the world is rational, because our mind is rational and we find reason and rationality within the world because the structure of our mind is shaped in such a way that it reflects and is reflected in the world. Uh, speculative logic is alive. It's a living, thinking entity because it is self-moving. It is not dead logic, it is self-moving logic and the categories, which are the, the classes through which we qualify being, move and flow through one another. Uh, it is the foundation of all truth and also all falsehood, because falsehood and truth are reciprocally defined by one another. And the speculative logic of Hegel contains within itself as, uh, as will be shown later, mechanism, chemism, what is the equivalent of chemistry in the physical realm, teleology, which is the, 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 the view of, of final causes, of final purposes, of end goals, uh, biology, which is uh, the, the, the discourse on life, but there is no organic biological life uh, in a natural way within Hegel's logic, but there is a self-moving, organic way of thinking. And according to Hegel, uh, life 
in the natural world is a reflection, is a mirror of the living thinking totality that uh, that is what he calls the ID, which is the totality of all logical determination organized systematically in a in a in a systematic and holistic uh, form. And also, it contains the rules of what we call logic, the, the science of, of the, the correct way of thinking and reasoning. Uh, is it really the truth? Uh, one cannot know yet, but it has been modified by Hegel. There are various versions of, of the logic within Hegel's work. So, yeah. That was for the introduction. And uh, now, uh, I will recommend that um, you can listen to the songs, but I will uh, begin a process of, um, of commenting um, by giving illustrations the various uh, moments of um, of the, the development of the logical ID. So, uh, in order to give a, a broad definition, although it's 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 lacking to give a simple a simply formal definition of what dialectics is. Dialectics is often defined as the process of thesis, antithesis, synthesis. The more correct way of defining it would be abstract, negation, concrete. And the most famous example is the very beginning of Hegel's logic, where we have pure being. Pure being, when one think about it, when, when one tries to determine what it might be or what it is, one doesn't find any determination within pure being. So it's, it's abstract because there is nothing within pure being. So this absence of determination, the fact that there is nothing uh, to be seen, to be understood, to be grasped, to, to be, to be, to be, to be uh, intuited within pure being, means that it is abstract. And this abstraction turns into its opposite, because pure being, because of its very lack of determination, is actually pure nothing. There is nothing in pure being. So this abstraction, this abstraction becomes the negation of itself. So we, we have the, the first movement of the dialectical process, abstract negation. And uh, the, the truth of being is neither pure being nor pure nothing, but the unity of both, the concrete unity. To, uh, concrete comes from a, a Latin word, which means to grow together. And the truth of being is not being. The truth of being is not nothing. It is the unity of both, which is becoming. And becoming is a concrete uh, concept, a concrete determination, because it contains within itself being and nothing as moments. And this is the most, the purest example, the purest illustration of the formal aspect of dialectics. So dialectics is this movement of going from the abstract to the negation of itself, to the return within itself, to the first moment, but uh, with um, including within itself the negative moment. That's simplified. Then we have in the sphere of existence, I will put the, the um, uh, in the description below, you will find the moment of the video where the, uh, the, the text and the plan of the logic appear. So I'm not very gifted when it comes to making um, um, the formal aspect of my videos. I need to improve, but uh, you might want to, 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 to stop the video here to look at the, the unfolding of, the, um, of the, the plan and to come back at this moment of the video. I know it's not very aesthetically uh, satisfying or maybe uh, what I will do is produce a video where I will just make the plan and so you can have both videos open at the same time and you can listen to the sound of my voice while watching the unfolding of the plan of the logical ID. I will do that, I think. So now we have the, in, the, in the sphere of existence, uh, 
it's not a very good translation because it is better to keep the word Dasein because existence uh, is um, is not is not a, a very good translation. So it, it's better to speak of Dasein. And we have finitude and infinity. And to illustrate, uh, I have used in my previous videos example of in the realm of politics and geopolitics, a state is a finite entity because it is limited, it is, it is uh, uh, determined by its non-being an other state or an other territory which does not belong to the state. And all states in the realm of politics have a, an impulse to transcend their limits, their finite aspect, and to become infinite, namely to extend beyond their limit. And there are two modes of transcending the limit and seeking the infinite. It's imperialism, uh, to try to conquer uh, an other territory, or the, the no-border ideology, which is not an attempt to, to transcend the limit by extending outward, but by incorporating uh, immigrants uh, to try to incorporate the negative of oneself within, one's, within oneself and to become infinite by... Uh, by negating one's own limits. So imperialism and uh, massive immigration are two modes, two attempts to transcend the limits and to reach the infinite within the realm of politics. Within the realm of cultural life, transgender people uh, are seeking unconsciously to transcend their sexual and gender limits because a man is limited because he has his limits in, in a woman, and, and a woman has its limit in a man, and uh, they seek to, to transcend uh, by becoming infinite, by having their, their own being uh, maintaining itself in the opposite gender. And transgenderism is an attempt to, to transcend the gender and the sexual limit and to reach the infinite. And it's a, a way of realizing Plato's ideal of the androgynous being that we find in a symposium within the realm of nature. So, yeah. Then, in the sphere of being for itself, uh, we have the determinations of the one and the many. And Hegel shows that the one becomes many. It is in the, in the, in the concept of the one to become many, and it is in the concept of the many to become one. And an example is the activity of thinking. When one thinks about the world, one reduces the multiplicity of phenomena and impressions and perceptions to the unity of the concept. When I'm in, in the middle of a forest and if I think about the concept of a tree, the multiplicity of trees, the hundreds and, and hundreds of trees around me become one in my mind because there is only one concept of a tree. And the, the motto uh, of the United States is et pluribus unum, out of the many one. And it is only through the activity of thought that one can reduce the multiplicity of, of, of uh, the manifold aspects of, of Dasein, existence, if you will, to the unity of the concept. And in this sphere, also the being for itself, we have repulsion and attraction. These are logical categories. And in ordinary life, an example of these logical determinations made manifest is that people enjoy watching scary movies or horror movies. They find it repulsive, but they are nonetheless attracted by, uh, by this. And that's why horror movies have a lot of success. Uh, yeah. Uh, then in the sphere of quantity and um, the, the process of the logic is not to find uh, randomly uh, the logical determinations, but they extract themselves from themselves by their own self-movement. So one is the, the logical de deduc deduc deduction of the, 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 the previous. And uh, yeah, we arrive in the realm of pure quantity. Examples of pure quantity given by Hegel are time. Time is the pure quantity and space. Uh, time is infinite uh, backward and forward, and space is infinite also. And um, then a more determinate 
determination of pure quantity is continuity and discretion, the, the discrete and continuous aspect of magnitude, as it is translated in English, of quantity. And an illustration of that is the question of race in the West and anywhere. Uh, the the anti-racist, they set the logical determination of continuity. They say that there are no races, there is only one human race, because the differences between the various so-called races are not discrete, they are not strictly fixed and set, they are continuous, there is no clear line of distinction. And the, the argument of the race realists or the racists uh, is that the, 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 the differences between the various races are discrete, that there are uh, distinguished groups, that European Caucasoids are not uh, Mongoloids and they are not uh, Negroids and so on and so forth. And uh, Hegel shows that uh, both uh, sides of the argument can be valid because precisely because quantity is logically both continuous and discrete. And another example is that light, the visible light. Uh, the differences between the various colors from a, a purely physical standpoint are quantitative differences of wavelength and what we see as different colors are different quantitative determinations of the electromagnetic field. But it's not because the differences are continuous that one would say that there is no light and there is no difference between orange and green. There are differences, they are quantitative and continuous, but they appear to us as qualitative. And another example is that water, uh, hot water and cold water are in a continuous spectrum of temperature, uh, but um, one wouldn't say that uh, there is no difference between uh, very hot water and very cold water, uh, precisely just because the difference is simply continuous and not discrete. A discrete difference, and we will see that in the realm of measure, would be the difference between ice and liquid water, or between liquid water and vapor. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, then, in the sphere of quantum, um, we have the determination of number, which is a determination that one uses constantly. It is uh, the foundation of arithmetic, and Hegel shows how uh, number is a, is a logical determination which appears uh, within the self-unfolding process of logic. And then we have extensive and intensive quantum, or quanta, and uh, in order to give an illustration of this distinction is that a charismatic man in the sphere of, of, of politics, if you will, is a man with an intense character, with a strong character, that's an intensive determination which is also a qualitative determination, determination because quality and quantity are two uh, aspects of the same logical um, de determination. A man with an intense, strong character will have an influence which will be more extensive. He, he will have a broad influence. He will be able to influence a larger, wider audience and to draw more followers. Or in another realm, elevated thoughts or deep thoughts, profound thoughts, like one finds in religion, uh, or, or the quotes by famous philosophers, they have they are very influential, and many people recognize themselves in these thoughts. So intensity and extension are two aspects, if one might speak of aspects, of the same logical determination. Then we enter the sphere of ratio or the quantitative relation. And here we find the direct ratio and the inverse ratio. And an example is that um, uh, correlation in the sphere of uh, uh, biology or chemistry or, or more uh, often in the, in the social sciences. There, in the social sciences, there are uh, quantitative correlation between two um, phenomena, for instance, uh, uh, wealth and social status is positively correlated with IQ in, in uh, democratic societies. And uh, an inverse correlation uh, is that within the various human groups, the level of testosterone is, um, is um, 
inversely correlated with the average IQ of the population, namely that uh, the, the human groups which on average have the, the highest level of testosterone have the lower IQ and inversely. So, yeah. And in the previous sphere, uh, the, the, um, we have the quantitative infinity. Uh, this is what Hegel calls the bad infinite. <clears throat> it is the infinite which always transcends the limits to go always out of itself. And if we have, if we, if we seek illustrations in the modern uh, political and, and cultural life, uh, the infinite economic growth, which is sought and searched and pursued by the capitalists, is the bad infinite because you can always get more production, more wealth, but you never end anywhere except uh, in, in a continuously ever increasing search for transcending the quantitative limit. Another example is that sp is space travel. Those who want to colonize space and to send uh, men and, 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 and spaceship in, in, others, in other solar systems or other galaxies, it's a will to transcend the quantitative limit of space. Or transhumanism is the idea to infinitely increase human intelligence by quantitatively increasing the, 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 the faculties of the brain by connecting the brain with uh, computers or machines or whatever. Um, then we have the sphere of measure and specific quantity. And here um, I can make um, the illustration that I took earlier. An example of measure in the realm of the physical sciences is that a quantitative change is indifferent to the being of the thing which is modified. Uh, water at 10 degree or 5 degree is an, an indifferent difference. It, it, it doesn't change the quality of, of the being, in this case, liquid water. But if you go from 5 degree to 0, liquid water becomes ice. And if you go from 95 degree to 100 degree, liquid, wa liquid water becomes vapor. So in the realm of physics, um, this quantitative uh, change which at first is indifferent brings about up to a certain limit which we call the measure the transformation and the qualitative change and another example in the realm of western politics uh, people say that up to a certain level of immigration uh, the the identity of the country will be lost if there are more than uh, 20 or 30 or 40 percent of non-natives People say that this country, France or Germany or the US or whatever, will lose its identity. So there is this idea that 5% is indifferent, 10%, 15% it's indifferent, but up to a certain limit, that which we call the measure, the quantitative change brings about a qualitative change, and that is a change of measure. And if being loses its measure, it loses its being. And then we have... Um, the, the sphere of uh, real measure. Uh, and here there is the measureless, which is an example of an excess, because when the measure is transcended, it's what the, the ancient Greeks call a hubris. It's a, a, an excess of measure. And there is a, a logical uh, uh, process at work, which brings back the excess back to its proper measure. This is the, the nemesis, the, the, the goddess of justice in a way. And an example is that when a country becomes too wealthy, when the citizens become too prosperous, there is a decadence in the, in the, in, in the social and, 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 and civic behavior. People become uh, morally decadent. But at the same time, when they become too wealthy, they become philanthropists. So an excess of wealth creates, in the realm of morality, the will to redistribute wealth. So when the wealthy reach a certain measure, an, an, an excess of wealth, they are compelled morally and socially to redistribute a part of their wealth. And, uh, and the wealthiest society are those who have the least amount of children. So up to a certain level of prosperity, people lose the will to reproduce themselves. And yeah, these are examples. And uh, then we have the sphere of the becoming of essence. And I have just had the, the time to comment on the, uh, the, the logic of, of being. Um, and the purpose of this video, I will make another video and maybe to 
two two other videos because I, I want to to illustrate what Hegel's logic is and, and how uh, it can help understand uh, the, the modern world because the world according to Hegel's logic is the reflection and the mirror image of, of the mind of God and the more one understands the mind of God the more one understands the world uh, because they are the mirror image of one another so I will put the 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 text uh, of the the logic with the the, the the German and the English translation and um, yeah I will make a second video it's not very uh, clear I am not yet very rigorous and very systematic but I am I'm, I am seeking to improve myself and I do what I what I can but the the whole purpose of this video is to show the 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 purpose, I don't know if you can speak of a purpose, the, the, the nature, the, the concept of Hegel's logic. And I will make a second and maybe a third video in which I will connect what I've been saying with Evola and uh, with the illustration of the songs. So, yeah.